Joshua. It's under Terry's support. I'm coming in under Joshua Project. It's a faith-based project. Okay. That I've done. I've done it for sixteen weeks, right. and I got uh, I graduated out of it. Brilliant. Um, I got my uh VTAC level five in safety and workplace. Brilliant. So I got a distinction in that. Um, so the Joshua program. So tell me what that is. Uh, yeah. It's faith-based. Yeah. And um, it's this will be the third year running, and it's like it's to get people who are unemployed or in a tough tough place at the minute, wherever they are in life, it doesn't matter. Um, if they're going through anything, it doesn't matter. They're they're there to help you like through that and get you back into employment, whether it's with someone else or whether it's in the Joshua community. Okay. Um. So they're very very helpful. Like even after I um, left it, they're they're still they still have me like. Yeah. Yeah, under the wing, you know what I mean. So is it three days a week? Three days a week, yeah. Four days. Uh, from half ten to three o'clock. Basically, to help people who may be in a bad place mentally. Mentally, physically, emotionally, anything really. Like it's in a dark hole. It's like unemployed. Um, you know, like there's like a lot of like having issues in their lives. Want to change their life for the better. And how do you get involved in it? Um. I heard about it in um, in the CDA in Cavan. Okay. Uh, so, um, I I had a problem with addiction as well, and I was in CDA in Cavan, and I came across the leaflet, and a friend of mine who I know um, closely was working in CDA at the time, okay. and I got uh, chatting to her about it, and she told me a bit about it, but not very much because it was pretty new at the time. It was about two. two Nearly three years ago when I got talked to her about it, so she was just really starting into it as well. Um, she put my name down for it, uh, so then I kept, I just kept at her the whole time to say, well, yeah, I definitely want to come on it, and I come on it anyway. And my sister, uh, Missy, uh, she was in a bad place. Um, she, she was in drug addiction as well, the same as me. Mm -hmm. Um, so like we were kind of in a very bad, bad place, but trying to, you know, trying to get out of it. Um, yeah, so I asked her would you come along and have the coffee mornings, do the coffee mornings, do four coffee mornings. So you have to do five before you go on it, see if you'd like it or whatever. And um, yeah, so the two of us were into it and we ended up starting together and we'd done the whole 16 weeks and it was the best thing that we ever done. Since I had something to do, um, my drug addiction kept going down, like all the time. Okay. I was going from using drugs once a month. Uh, to go completely off as soon as I started the Joshua project. Mm -hmm. um, I think the reason being is because I was able to get everything out in the open there, but there was nothing, nothing a secret. Okay. So I was able to tell everybody and there was no judgement or anything. It was a safe place for you to yeah. share? Yeah. Was that the first time you were ever in that environment? Uh, yeah, because like I've done courses, like uh, I've done like, you know, um, FETAC level, whatever, um, courses. And like I've made friends, but I've never like been able to talk to them about like, um, like uh, being a traveller or um, like my drug addiction and stuff. So there was never like anything like that. So in Joshua, it felt like just a close knit family. To be honest, right. it felt like you were talking to your family. I felt welcome from the beginning, and we all got on like, like it, it was so sad leaving everybody in, in the end and it was only for 16 weeks and I got more emotion out of that than I did in any course that I'd done in my life. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And that actually helped you to kick free from the habit that me. you were yeah. in? Yeah, and I'm free, I'm free from drugs nearly nine months now. That's just brilliant. Yeah. So you were still using when you were doing the training? Or um, the using the... When I was, when I would have been doing the coffee mornings. Okay. Um, I would have been. Okay. I would have been doing it once a month that time. Okay. So I was taking myself down for already. Brilliant. Slowly. And people were non-judgmental. Nope. Not one bit. Not one bit. And mm -hmm. I was like pleasantly surprised because I didn't know what pe what way people would react. But there was some people in there that was in the same situation, so they understood, you know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it was just people. There was people that was like believed in fate and the different faiths. And so they believed in like not to be judgmental, you know. Yeah. Well, the the travellers that would have been there was would have been only my sister and uh, myself. How did that feel for you? First, I did think to myself, um, like, oh, wow, I don't know, you know what I mean, because I don't know what it'd be like 
but then I knew that I'd done courses before and it was fine mixing with um, other people. Um, but yeah, like they were like great from the start. Like we didn't have to like, you know, say that, oh, um, like what do you think of travellers or we're travellers, you know what I mean? Like it was kind of eased. I just got talking to people and just, you know what I mean? There was no, they didn't even ask us like, you know, mm -hmm. but we kind of like eased our way into it ourselves. So right. we did. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. I'm delighted for you. Mm. Thanks. I mean, what a, what a journey you've been on. Mm. Yeah, well, I, uh, I suffered from depression and anxiety for years, and um, I'm on medication still. Okay. Um, I'm on a low dose now, but I'm still on it, and I would eventually like like to get off it. Um, so I'm trying to like um, I'm trying to keep fit. I'm trying to like do things. Uh, to keep my mind like you know at ease and not yeah. overthinking and stuff because I used to do that a lot, okay. a lot. Yeah. Uh, but then I end up getting um, getting up to the, the job in here, and um, yeah. so I'm doing that three days a week now, the same day, days as the Joshua group, and um, so I do cleaning and that now, and okay. um, people coming now to have a chat with them, have a okay. cup of tea, whatever. You so know, you're like, part of the team. Yeah, yeah. So like I'm getting to know more people as well in my community That's and. Right. Uh, there's a lot more, um, lot more, much less judgmental around here now because, like growing up here, um, we had like a lot of, um, do you know, like people being judgmental, thinking yeah. that we're all the same. Like if right. one of our family do something, then we're all the same. You know, painted with the same brush, yeah. kind of way. But uh, we kind of proved them in the end that we're not all bad eggs. Yeah, you know, right, you yeah. know. Yeah. Might be one or two of them, but we're not all the same, you know. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Well, you're just a credit to your community and to the community at large. Yeah. Why travellers don't engage with the mental health counselling services and things like that? Yeah. What do you think might be some of the issues? I don't know. I've often thought about that myself because I'm the kind of one where I would actually look for help. Like, like I'm the one that's I'm very like you know I go to a doctor when I feel sick. I you know, I, I'm the kind of one that's scared, so I would like, I want to go for the help, you know, and I don't understand sometimes why people uh, wouldn't want to get the help, you know, that they need. Even to talk to somebody that they know, like, you know, um, so that's why I'm, I'm trying to, like, get some of my family together, especially the girls, anyway, yeah. um, and to try to just get them to talk out, you know what I mean, about their issues, about their problems that they have and stuff, um, because I know a lot of them are going through a lot, but they don't say it enough do you know what i mean they don't go for the help um that they need and all and they need it like mm -hmm. but um but yeah i've done uh counseling myself and um i found it very good like okay. you know um being the the woman that was doing it with me we were talking one-on-one -on -one like this in this room and mm -hmm. yeah it was just like i felt very at ease with her and all like you know she's very down to earth and she was like non-judgmental as well like she okay. was very very good and um and how many sessions do you do of that? I was with her, her for close to a year. Good on. And um, yeah, so I was doing it once a week, and um, I found that helped me a lot. Okay. Um, did I, you did you find hearing your own story, you were able to kind of decipher what was going yeah. on in your life? Yeah, because I said I said I told my story before to another counsellor, but I couldn't. She said that I was the perfect candidate for counselling, but it's just that I was still on the drugs that time. I was, um, I couldn't, I had to go through drug counselling. That's how I got talking to the woman in here. She was through the CDA in Cabin, mm -hmm. and that's how I got talking to her. So, um, but it was the best thing I ever done. Thank God. Because when I got talking to her, then I got in here with Joshua, and then I got my job, and then um, I'd meet my counsellor then afterwards, and she'd see how well I was doing and it was brilliant, like it, I just, I felt so good about myself. I um, suffered a lot with my skin. Um, I'd acne for a long time since I was about 12 yes. um, but like the depression could be I don't know it could very very young because I just know for a fact the way I used to be um, I never wanted to come out of the house and um, I used to be very like um, self-conscious all the time and mm -hmm. you know what I mean very down like ups and downs I had like mood swings 
mm -hmm. had like very very bad uh, mood swings mm -hmm. and they're only really stopping in the last few years okay. um, since I've and since I've come off the drugs I've been a lot lot better as well mm -hmm. with my mental health um, I think that's helped a lot coming off drugs absolutely yeah because your mind's at ease you know that's right yeah absolutely that demon that takes over your life is gone. Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly what it is. Some brilliantly fair juice to you. Thanks. What a brilliant story. To tell. You're out the other end of it. Yeah. So I suppose really one of the things I suppose as a, as a society mm -hmm. we're trying to find out is how do we help other travellers. Yeah. So what do you think could be done to help other members of the community? Open place up here. They can come up and talk, you know what I mean? Um, we can talk about anything, whatever their issues may, may be, you know. Yeah. Um, just ask them one by one, like have in, have their talks one by one in the room or yeah. wherever they feel comfortable, whoever they feel comfortable with, you know, and just kind of get out what, what their issues in is and then like do things, like like do things together because I know a lot of the girls are just sitting at home with their partners, like doing God knows what, doing hardly nothing. I know I've got a few cousins that used to be very, very close to me and they hardly come up to me anymore. And, you know, it's very sad. Like, and like, a lot of my depression as well growing up was um, my family departing. Kind of, you know, my family and close friends uh, departing over the years and stuff. Like, they had their own, do you know, they had their own issues and family and stuff. And yeah. you kind of like, I kind of wish sometimes that they come and have a chat and, and all, you know what I mean? Like, mm. Do you think since you've changed your life that in some ways they've kind of left you on the outside? Um, or are no. you still very welcome into the community? I know, I definitely am, like, oh, I definitely am. But um, I can see where people come from, like, they think that, um, yeah, because I've changed my ways and some of them haven't, mm -hmm. that they can, like, um, think, oh, well, you think you know it all, you know, you think that, you know. Yeah. But, like, I do tell them all the time, I say, look, I know what situation I'm in now, but it took a long time for me to, to realise what I need to do with my life, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And I'm obviously I'm still learning, like, you know. Yeah, that's and, right. No, but every, all of my family, thank God, are with me 100%, you know. Great. So God. that's so that's good, you know. Yeah. Just, like yeah. get talked to a few of them though and see it, you know. Yeah, I'm right. trying to get a few of them to do things around the community because yeah. there's the man shed here, yeah. there's the garden, there's a few different thing options yeah. for the men yeah. and then for the women then there's rooms here they can come up and then there's you can do cooking in there in the kitchen as well, yeah. you know. Yeah, you yeah. can do a lot of things that I see other people doing. Yeah. They can do it as well, you know, yeah. instead of sitting sitting at home doing nothing. Yeah, that's right. You know, just sitting depressed or yeah. whatever they're doing. Yeah, well I've and been going to doctors for years and years and to be honest with you sometimes I do feel like they think that I'm not not serious enough do you know I feel I really do feel that because like I've gone out to the doctors I don't know how many times in the last few years like I, I was always in the doctors because I felt like I've never got the right answers from them and I felt like when I go down that they'd be saying something like there's oh well, there's nothing wrong with you, you know, like okay. and I think in a way, I don't know if I just overthink things a lot, you know, I, I really do over okay. overthink a lot. I've been on the medication now for a few years and um I do have a talk talks with my doctor like um about like coming down off off of my medication and like he was actually he was actually good and with me and um I went on I went on the patch to get off the bags as well and he's very helpful with that as well and you know there's a lot of encouragement from doctors as well like anything you looked for you got yeah anything yeah. you put an effort into has thankfully worked out for you but yeah. you put your heart and soul into yeah. it i do have anxiety now again okay. you know i do um, and have you learned different mechanisms of oh working yeah with that? oh yeah and i'm like i take like um, a kind of a stress remedy Okay. Um, if I'm feeling anxious about anything, so like just, a herbal treatment. Yeah, I've got it. I have it in my bag there, yeah. but it's like um, it's like droplets. You put it on your tongue, or you put it into your tea, and okay. it kind of calms you down. So yeah, yeah. yeah, so that kind of works as well. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. So in terms of back to the community and how to actually encourage other people to get involved, I mean that's the big question, isn't it? Yeah, you just need to kind of like um, sit a few of them down and kind of. Yeah. break it easy really yeah, don't, don't right. obviously say oh well you need help you know yeah. you have to come at it um easy Gentle, think yeah. about yeah think about if you were asked 
that you know what I mean yeah. but yeah I definitely feel like um, there's a lot of help to be if somebody wanted to take part in the Joshua program who do they contact or how do you get involved well the centre here all the time is open okay. so like that's all they need to do and we, we're, we've all got contacts so you can just ask one person and they can contact the next and could you train up to be a Joshua facilitator I'm working under Joshua now at the minute, but the way Joshua works, the way Joshua works is that you have to work in an apprentice. Um, so if you're going to work in um, timekeeping, if you're going to work in uh, doing the books like the administration and um, bookkeeping, but you can bring your own ideas to the table table as well. So um, it's kind of it's kind of an open an open book for anyone like really okay. if they have ideas going in there and it's it's it can work then they'll uh, work towards getting you that and um i'd obviously like tell people about it yeah, because course, yeah. like my family and, and friends like know about it yeah. but it's, it's brilliant like it's changed my life like, oh god yeah. yeah it really has yeah like, and when you came here did you want to completely not really give up the drugs yeah, at the time i did you had made that conscious oh, I decision i had made that decision anyway mm. but um i think i was just doing something and yeah i think the main the main thing for me was being able to talk to others about it in my group yeah. so like where I wanted to go off uh, drugs before, I'd done a course and because I wasn't talking to people about it in it, yeah. I felt, I don't know, I felt kind of, um, oh well, you know, I can't tell anybody about it. Yeah. But then when I came into Joshua, I was able to then, you know, I was able to get my um, story across and I felt more comfortable and them egging you on when you're saying that you're clean and all, you know, it kind of uh, makes you feel good. Yeah. If, did you have a support network in the evening and at the weekends through um, the Joshua program? Yeah, I would have like if if I felt like I, I was going, you know, I felt like um, I needed someone to talk to. There was always one like there was a there was a woman called Carol, and she was kind of my support system and um, through Joshua. So she would bring me for a uh, coffee and we'd have a chat about things and mm -hmm. yes, yeah, so she was really, really good. Like that was she was the one that I connected with more. Yeah. In Joshua. But any of them any of them would, you know, in a heartbeat like help you right, if you okay. needed to talk. Yeah, yeah. You know, so they're brilliant. Yeah. So I think really what I'm getting on the whole conversation is the fact that the place was safe. Yeah. It was okay to share. Yes. Nobody made any judgments. Exactly. And it was the first time you've ever been in an environment like that. Exactly. And it changed your life. Hundred percent. Yeah. And how do we get other travellers to believe that I know, and, and encourage them to engage with yes. something, you know, that's so I powerful. Have, have, you know, suicide is six times higher in the traveller community. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Quite a frightening statistic, it is isn't very, it? very, very frightening. Yeah. yeah. And it's only with you, the likes of yourself coming on board with the yes. mental health teams yeah. all over Ireland yeah. that we're going to be able to make any difference. Yeah, definitely. It is really Definitely, and I really feel that it's a big need in the traveller community. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Because well, well, what we need is, um, a f you know, people that are going to be advocates within their own community. Yes, true. That's what we need. So true. You know. Yep. Um, and, you know, that you've made such an impact and change in your own life. Yeah. And that you had the strength to do it against all odds. Yes, and my against family can see where it come from and what like what I went through and mm -hmm. to be able to come out the other end of it better off, you know what I mean? Like um so yeah that's what I want for for my family as well. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And some of them are there and there then they get dragged back down again, you know. That's right, yeah. It's just But it's about never giving up. 